Hello, my name is Carl and welcome to the Straw Bite Workshop. In the workshop this week I'm going to be making this, which is a new bench top for my mitre saw. So if you've been following my channel for a while now, you'll have seen me review this, which is my DeWalt mitre saw. I have to say in the time that I've had it, it's been really useful. It's probably one of my favourite tools in the shop but it was going to need a permanent home as well. And the other thing about the workshop at the moment is the fact that I seriously lack storage space. So a little while ago I came up with a design which would have a mitre stand top and plenty of storage space for my sustainers below. And uh, this is really part one of that project. If you're new to my channel, then this is the sort of thing that I do. I review tools and I complete, mostly for the moment, workshop projects. And if you want to see more of that, then I suggest you hit the subscribe button now below. And also check out the links below to Patreon and my website where there are plenty of opportunities to support the channel directly. So uh, let's get on and talk about how I put this together. I'm using a three quarter inch softwood plywood. It's relatively inexpensive. And in this case, I had my home center cut the pieces to the correct dimensions that I wanted. So really the first thing is to work out the opening for the top. I want it to closely fit the saw itself. So I'm measuring carefully around the edge and tracing on to what is the underside of the top, the sort of outline cutout that I need to make. Now I'm not quite sure what finish that I want. In the original idea, I was gonna paint all of my shop cabinets a sort of battleship gray. However, I may well leave the finish natural. I want the edges of the plywood to look neater. So I'm just edge banding the exposed edges that will be at the front of the project. One thing that I ought to have done was maybe think about my cuts more because edge banding small stick pieces is rather fiddly. So for all the joints, I'm using my new Festool Domino. Now this might not be for everybody, and I'm pretty certain that a lot of you will be thinking, well, hang on a sec, Domino joinery is just way too expensive for me. And in which case then, there are a couple of alternatives that I can recommend. The first really is to use dowels and screws. Uh, that's a fairly conventional and inexpensive way of jointing your boards. You could also use biscuits. Biscuits are great when you're making cabinets because they ensure the correct alignment between the vertical pieces and the horizontal pieces in your project. They don't add much strength though, but you can reinforce all of those joints with glues and screws. So either way, there's really nothing in this project that you see at the moment that is not achievable with some basic tools at home. Having done all the joinery, I dry fitted all of the components just to make sure that everything lined up. And guess what? Oh, it goes together. Oh, that's amazing. Do you know what? I couldn't be happier.
Then we move on to gluing everything up. This was something that I was a little bit concerned about. The areas underneath the top are hard to get to uh, with a damp rag. So what I did instead was I laid down some masking tape, which I removed later, and that removed the vast majority of the glue re residue and then allowed me to get in there with a scraper just to clean the corners up later. So I practically used every F-style clamp that I own to hold this thing down, then plonk some heavy weights, including the saw itself, on top and let the glue dry. Then I came back and affixed screws to the underside. I've picked 90 millimeter long screws which go through the bottom, through the uprights in the top and into the top itself, thereby holding everything firmly together. So here I'm checking that the saw is flush with the surface and I'll use shims under the saw to bring it up so that everything's nice and level. And now I can move on to the, to the more unique part of the project which is installing the dog holes. I'm using the path guide system and I won't show a great deal of detail as to how the path guide system works. There are plenty of good instructional videos online, including probably the most comprehensive one, which is from Peter Parfit, the inventor of the guide system himself. So with shims under the saw, everything is nice and level. So until I get my new cabinet built, the plan is that the saw will sit on the existing mitre saw stand. So I need to take the hardware off of the stand and install it onto the underside of the new top. The point of the dog holes really is to allow me to get away with not having a fence, but also so that I can put clamps through to clamp work pieces to the top and so on. I was thinking about using uh, T-Track, but uh, decided in the end that maybe I'll give this system a go. And really very early on, uh, just a few experiments uh, once I'd completed the project, I'm really happy with how this works. So there we go, here's the finished product. So I'm really pleased with how this project has turned out. Um, the uh, dog holes work great and I'm not tempted to put the T-Track in that I bought originally and featured as part of the original design. I think this is going to work just fine. This is a, a trendy fenceless um, mitre station and this won't be for everybody. If you want a fence or you feel you can't live without one, then put one into yours. But maybe think about using dog holes. They're really handy for slipping clamps through to get your work pieces clamped to the bench top. 
and it gives you much better control of the workpiece than the clamps that are typically fitted to any saw. So that's about it and uh, with that uh, this is uh, project done, maybe project one of two. We'll come to look at the base for it and the storage for the sustainers in a future video. Um, if you like the video please give it a thumbs up, comment on it and share it with your friends. Um, this has been a labour of love really over the last couple of months and I've really enjoyed the project and I love the results and I hope you you like what I've achieved too. So for now, from the workshop, cheerio.